I heard an agronomist talking the other day and he was saying how you shouldn't put any fertility in furrow in soybeans and I just thought to myself, you know, we've been doing that on our farm for many years and it works fine as long as you're doing things correctly. But then the other thing I thought about is, I'll bet that farmer that he was talking to isn't going to do anything for soybean fertilizer. That was going to be his entire soybean fertility plan, was putting a couple gallons of fertilizer in furrow, and I just think that's really unfortunate. So we want to talk about both of those things today. Where do you put soybean fertilizer and what should you put on? Well, when we talk about soybean fertilizer, I get some chuckles at meetings. I say, what are you laughing about? And guys are like, well, we aren't throwing fertilizer on our beans. We're putting a two-year amount of fertilizer on the other crop in the rotation. Maybe it's wheat. Maybe it's corn. We put extra fertility there, then whatever's left, we leave that for the beans. Well guys, this is just not working anymore. You know, back in the days where we had 30 bushel wheat or 80 bushel corn, you know, there was plenty of fertilizer left for a soybean crop the next year because you're probably getting 20 or 30 bushel soybeans. Well now on our farm, we're getting 60 bushel beans, we're getting 200 bushel corn, we're getting 100 bushel wheat. You may say, wow, those are great levels, but our fertility programs haven't kept up. So we do need to apply fertilizer whenever we're planting soybeans. The problem with soybeans is they're a lot more sensitive to fertilizer placed close to the seed than what corn is, for example. So can you put some soybean fertility right in furrow? Yes, you can, but you have to be careful what you're putting in there, what the salt load is, and exactly how you're going to put it in the furrow. So in other words, what we'll do on our farm is just put a low rate of micronutrients, maybe a quart, quart and a half of micronutrients, and maybe a half a gallon to a gallon of a very low salt fertilizer, like a Pro Germinator, Surecase, something like that. Then besides that, we're either doing a strip till or we are going out there foliar feeding this year. We've even done some broadcast for fertilizer. The point is soybeans remove lots of phosphorus, potassium, and micronutrients, and even a little bit of sulfur too. So did you know that a 60 bushel soybean crop, just the grain alone, is going to remove about 84 pounds of K2O potassium and about 48 pounds of phosphate. That's what's coming off the field just with the grain. So in other words, if you leave all the residue out there, you say, oh, I'm doing a good job with fertility. Well, are you replacing what you removed? And if you're not, you need to at least be thinking about that because 84 units of K2O potassium, that's a lot of stuff. Just to replace that, you need 150 pounds of potash if you're using potash. And here's the big thing too. I talked to so many farmers that say, you know, my corn yields are going up, up, up. My bean yields are really stagnant. Yep. And the first question I say is, well, what's your fertility program like on those soybeans? Well, what do you mean? I'm doing most of my fertility on the corn, and that's really the big reason that we see. Now, granted, corn genetics have really gotten a lot better, and soybeans are starting to pick it up now, too. But the fertility program on beans has really lacked. Now, just to comment a couple things Brian said, putting things in the furrow, if you can keep a little bit of soil in between your seed and the fertility, that's fantastic. If you can do it two by two, that's great. Even if you have to put it in the furrow, if you can spray it on the sides of the trench rather than dribbling it right on the seed, that's going to help things out. Anything you can do will give you a little more cushion for safety. Also, when you're putting things in furrow, it's a lot safer when you have more clay in your soil. If you have heavier soils, higher organic matter soils, you're going to be able to get away with a lot more than if you've got a sandy, low organic matter soil. So just keep those things in mind with soybean fertility. Yeah, one last thing I guess I'd bring up there too is if you have dry weather conditions, you're much more likely to have problems with any of the high salt fertilizers. If you have very wet conditions, you might be able to get by throwing some 1034 out or you know even some potash relatively close to the seed but don't think you can do that consistently and get away with it. So again, some years, yes, it'll work out fine if you have enough rain, just the right weather conditions, everything else, but we wanna be safe. We're spending so much money putting that crop in, paying for the rent and equipment and everything else. You've invested all that money. You've gotta place the fertility right if you want good yield because the last thing you wanna do is invest money in fertilizer and it ends up hurting your yield and your income. Okay, one last comment here on soybean fertility too. You can certainly do some foliar feed Feeding on soybeans later on in the season. There have been some inconsistent results on our yep. farm. Some years it works great, some years it doesn't. We're trying a different program this year. Hopefully it's going to be a little bit better. Some of the guys that we work with have been using some SureK foliar where they need some additional potassium. As Brian mentioned, soybeans have such a high demand for potassium. Putting out something like a SureK uh, right in those reproductive stages once we get into July, that's going to be a good timing to do that. Well, yeah, but again, it has been more inconsistent on our farm than placing fertility at planting time or even in the fall prior to planting. And so the reason why 
we're talking so much about this placement of fertilizers, we just want you putting some fertility on your soybeans. You will consistently have better yield if you do that. You can try the foliar feeding thing, but if you do a good job with your soils, the foliar feeding will be less important for you. Well, no matter what you do, you need to focus on fertility and having a successful soybean crop that will close the canopy, or you may end up with weed problems like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control this tough weed later in the show.